<laughs> hey! So, I want to talk a little bit about the Backpacker Studio. I just got through with a three week trip through South America and I took a whole bunch of gear with me, but not really. It's still, Backpacker Studio is still a very, very much a minimalist approach to photography. My photography has definitely evolved, got lots of tips and tricks to kind of share with you, and I thought it'd be really, really cool to take a look at the Backpacker Studio and look at the gear that I took with me on my three-week trip that involved a client shoot and shooting for myself. So let's take a look, first of all, at lighting. I, I used to pretty much exclusively only use speed lights, um, and I realized that I was really limiting myself, so now I use power when I need it, so I definitely use a, uh, I use the Palsy Buff I always have. This is a, a newer Einstein. I like the Einstein because it's really powerful when I need the power. And I also can dial it down to like four watts a second, meaning I mean, it's, it's really low power, low power like the speed lights. So uh, I use the two in conjunction with another, the two together. Um, it seems to work fine with me. I don't need to have two strobes, one powerful strobe, one speed light. That's all I really need. That's two lights, but if you think about the ambient, is your third light. So you've always got at least a third, a three light setup. When you start adding scrims and reflectors, you get even more than that. So that's that's my minimum setup, a two light thing. Um, I've got my triggers. I just use the cheapo triggers that I can find, the Chinese triggers. They're just gaffer taped right to the side of this, permanently affixed. And when I need it, boom, it's ready to go. Hey, I got this really cool trick. Check this out. I got the, the mini Vagabond to power my strobe when I need it. And so I just take the excess, right? So that's going to be all over the place, flimsy. And I just tie it in a knot. And I don't need to buy another little gizmo or anything like that. I'm totally, completely portable. Or my assistant can carry it very, very easily. Speed light. So one of the things that's changed with the speed lights is that in the old days, I used to have, right, speed light, trigger, right into the umbrella bracket, really, really, really wobbly, and I broke not only a ton of triggers, but I also broke the feet, the bottom of the feet of, um, I like prefer to use the Nikon speed lights. Um, hey, now I've got a whole drawer full of, you know, Nikon speed lights that are broken and trick busted up triggers. So somebody made me one of these little gizmos, right? It's like a little, it just attaches there and now the thing's secure, it's not going anywhere. It also makes the light fire down the softbox of the umbrella or whatever light modifier right down the center as opposed to kind of being up. So two purposes, more even light and the other one is to protect you know, the investment of the trigger and the speed light. Um, the neat thing is, is that now um, I'm making these things, or actually there's a guy in New York City that hand makes these things. We went through a lot of different prototypes to kind of get it right. Really, really high quality uh, closed cell neoprene, acrylic, really heavy duty stud, the best possible Velcro that you can buy. So they're built like tanks. So small, fits in the bag, easy to go. Um, I always carry a ring flash with me. Ring flash is not only great for kind of fashion, um, it's also really, really good for fill. I, there's a lot, of, a lot of things that I'll use this. And this is the one that you can stick on the speed light, right? So I always have that thing with me. What else do I have? Um, is that a super clamp? Is that what that is? Super clamp, right? So I can put this thing on here and attach another stand. Here, I'll show you. This is this is a this is a cool trick. I love this trick of the super clamp. I normally don't give all these tricks away, but why not? So you shove this little guy on here, and now you can attach another stand on here, and you've got a boom. So that's why I like these things. Or if you just want to attach really anything, something to anything. What else do I have in here? In my bag of tricks, um, I really like, I'm back to using prime lenses. A prime 50 and a 105. A 105 is probably my new, new favorite uh, 2.0. It's lightweight, it's sharp, it's kind of almost in between a 70 and a 200. Um, I just, I love this lens, and so anyway, when I really want to shoot, let's say that it's f16 outside, it's right nice and bright, but I, I need a shallow depth of field, I'll use one of these neutral density filters. 
you just shove them right here on, on there and it's an adjustable so it, it's a ver what they call a varying ND so I get between two and eight stops it's like putting a pair of sunglasses on your camera right on your lens so love the neutral density filter so what's next oh I always carry gaffers tapes with me um, Looks like it's time to buy a new one. I use it on every single shoot for something, so you need this. It's an essential piece of gear right here. Gaffer tape. What else do I have in here? Ah, I don't know. <laughs> Cameras. When it comes to camera, I'm using an old D700 full frame. It's It's been around. I've dropped it from a second story building. It's gaffer taped together, so the door is broken for the battery, it's coming apart, but let me tell you what, um, it feels great in the hands, my muscle memory, uh, I know where everything is, I don't even have to think about really anything but spending more time with my subject. So am I going to buy a new camera? No, I'm going to wait until this thing completely dies because I look at cameras like it's just a box. I'm not worried about megapixels and all that kind of stuff. I just want a really great camera. So. That's my theory on that. I always have with me gels. So, right? So I just shove the, I just tear off. I get the sample packs. You can buy them for two or three bucks on, you know, B&H or Adorama, one of those. And just pull out what you need. Gaffer tape it to the side of it. And now I've got uh, gels. I also gel, I also bring gels with me for the, the strobe as well. So I'm not, I don't limit myself just to gelling with the speed light. So I've got a couple of those primarily ones that I would use a lot, like a CTO, color temperature orange, and a handful of other ones, some colors, primary colors that I would use. Ah, really, really important piece of gear that I got. My mom bought this for me. It's called the Jam Box, and I just have my iPhone hooked up with, with uh, Bluetooth. And I've got tunes now, so I always make sure if I, uh, I, have, I have a shoot with the model, I ask her either to bring music or... Uh, ask her what music she likes and I put it on there and we've got tunes always portable. I don't have it with me now but normally what I do is I have a small little bag that fits right next to next to this and all that would go in there I would put on the light stand itself I would shove a couple of extra lenses my any filters that I need anything that could go into a small bag so it's right there so I don't have my big camera bag kind of hassle and in the way. What else do I have? Um, grids, I have not only do I have grid spots for the strobe, I also have a grid that uh, just simply velcros to the outside of the speed light. So you gotta have grids. Grids are giving you just a little uh, hit pockets of light that you need to accent things. I use grids quite a bit. Um, I do shoot a lot of videos, so one of the things that I have in here is my Sennheiser microphone. All right. Let me see other gizmos. Of course, all the little chargers and things like that. Going back to lenses, I have an old 80 to 200. Um, I I find I'm not, I'm not afraid of uh, high ISO with my camera. It does fine. I can shoot at ISO 1600, even 3200 in some cases. And so I don't need the uh, the VR. So I just buy the I bought an old you know six or seven hundred bucks and save save some money. 80 to 200. Let me see what else do I have in here. Um, I've got these flasks. These are kind of cool, right? I've got Velcro kind of plastered to the, every all my lights. So I need to flag a light, you know, if I'm getting a little bit of lens flare. Just a piece of corrugated plastic, you know, that they make signs out of. Boop. Same thing with the strobe. Got that. What else? What other gizmos do I have? Hey, I didn't even talk about it. Really, really, really important is having a scrim and a reflector. So I carry, here's a, a reflector that I use almost on every shoot, and then of course a scrim that goes along with that. That I can either shoot through or use to nice diffuse light, multiple purposes. And I have a small bag. This was the original bag that I would carry with me everywhere. Of course, I've got the bigger bag now. Um, if I if I'm on a shoot and I, I, I don't want to carry a lot of gear with me, I'll just kind of transfer what I need and shoot, take exactly what I need and put it in here or just carry on me what I need. I've got the small bag here with an extra lens. I've got my camera strapped to my body and I can 
take this and one more stand and I'm ready to go. So I'm all about minimalist approach. Um, something that I had been doing recently is not starting with the lights, starting with the ambient light and training my eye to become what I call a light chaser. So looking at light happening naturally, it's bouncing, it's reflecting, it's diffused, it's happening all around us. So I'm looking for that and how can I use that or manipulate it to get the shot that I need so that I don't have to use this stuff. I'd rather spend more time, first of all, it's a better light. Natural light to me is, has the best quality of light. It's just beautiful and you can control it, manipulate it. So adding this stuff when you need it, great. But let me tell you what, I just did three weeks of shooting. I pretty much exclusively shot natural light. A couple of shots I needed this, but hey, anyway. Um, what else can I, can I share with you guys? I think that's it. So, we'll just uh, play a little bit of music and we're out of here. Alright, so I want to talk a little bit more about the Gordon strap and the Maryland strap and what's the difference. Um, first of all, this, was, this is the original one that somebody made me uh, and gave to me. Uh, I carried it around with me for two years. I used it all the time because I had broken all my, the, the feet off of almost all of my speed lights except for this one. Uh, it's the only, it's my last one. That's, anyway, um, so I was in New York City last year and I was giving a workshop. And the student, and I was showing them, hey, you know, if you could make yourself one of these, that's great. And the student said, hey, I could make you one and I can make it better. And I was like, really? And he did, and he sent it to me. And this is what he sent me, right? This is what he sent me. So this is the original prototype um, that became the Gordon, like Gordon flash Gordon, Gordon strap. So it fits on there, and it's great. You know, big plate. He used a really good, uh, his name is Sherwin. Sherwin used a really nice uh, quality Velcro stud on there. It's, it's rock solid. And we started making them. I said, hey, if you want to make them and throw them up on the website to sell, and because, because it's a piece of gear that I use and I would never sell something that uh, on my site that I didn't personally use and believe in. So there it is. And as we kind of, we went, okay, that weather stripping's not really quite cutting it. So it sort of evolved and we, we came up with this little guy. We made something a little bit smaller. My mom had the idea of, hey, why don't you make one for the, for the girls and make it pink and call it Marilyn. Like, who is the most photographed um, woman in the world? Marilyn Monroe, right? So we called it the Marilyn and take the wiggle out of the jiggle, the Marilyn, right? So we came up with the Marilyn and we improved this. This is a closed cell neoprene, really, really tough. Made it pink. Um, and then nobody would buy them except for girls. But the truth is, I like this one better because it does the same thing as the Gordon. But the Gordon's twice the size. It does the same exact thing. It holds on there just as strong, right? But the cool thing is that you don't have to just buy pink. We maybe uh, Sherwin's making them in different colors. By the way, he's hand making these things. I don't know whether he's got a basement or garage or whatever. But we tried to, um, we w were interested in maybe going to China and all this kind of stuff. We're like, you know what, let's just hand make them and it is what it is and we'll do a limited run and, it's, and so they may not be around forever. So it works the same, it's on there just as strong. One last bit of change that I decided is this, this was a little bit too spongy so we decided we would make the newer one. It's a little bit, a little bit harder. Other than that, it's the same exact thing. You can buy both the Gordon, the longer one, if you think the bigger is better. But the truth is, in this case, smaller is better. I don't even know if I can say that. But anyway, um, so there it is. Oh, so what does it do? I guess I should talk about what it does rather than the construction of it. So here's the thing, right? If you're like me, I like to use the triggers that, that don't have cables, right? Um, sure, it's really nice to have those really expensive ones and then you got this PC cable and it's just another piece of gear either to lose or go to go bad. So I actually prefer to use the cheapo triggers. They go right on the hot shoe. But the problem is when you get this thing up on your stand, it's wiggly. If it, first of all, it's just unstable. And when it falls, you're either going to break the foot 
of your speed light, which I've got a whole drawer of these things at home, or you're going to bust the, bust the trigger. And I've, I've gone through, I've exploded a lot of triggers um, until this little gizmo. So that's what it does. It has one other, one other feature about it that makes sense to me. Because when this thing is up in, the, in, your, in your stand, right, if you're doing it the old method, it's a little high, so you're going to get a hot spot. It's not firing down the center. But if you lay it flat, right, now it's actually firing directly down the center, so you get a nice, even dispersion of light if you're using a softbox or an umbrella from, corner, from end to end, right? And that's pretty much it. So it's this nice quality Velcro. It's not going anywhere. The Gordon flash strap or the Maryland, I prefer the Maryland. And by the way, uh, if you just make a hand note, if you buy it that you don't want the pink one, we'll send you like an orange one or a red one or a gray one or a black one or whatever color we have. So there you go. Email me if you got any questions.